Welcome everybody to Sharing Soulful Stories. Today I am with Krista Bjorn. Welcome Krista, thank you for being here with me. Thank you so much, I'm really happy to be here. I'm so excited to have you because I'm, I'm actually fascinated to hear more about your story and before I do that though I'm going to let everyone know a little bit more about you and what your life is like now. So Krista is an artist, an author, a photographer and a grower of deliciousness on her Australian farm. She is also a grateful survivor thriver who believes in the power of shared stories and creativity to heal the darkest experiences of our lives. Her great joy is working with herbs for healing. She grows, forages, harvests and turns them into nourishing remedies to strengthen the body, soothe the spirit and ease discomfort. She loves sharing the history and uses of herbs through books through her books and her workshops. So exciting. Thank you again for being here. <laughs> ah, so my opening question for everybody is, because we're here to talk about spirituality, so we're going to dive right in. What does spirituality mean to you? Um, well, I grew up thinking that it was a very terrible thing. Um, and that it was evil and something to be avoided at all costs. And then I actually started studying it. And, um, and I realized that for me, spirituality is simply caring for your spirit. It is caring for your soul. It is caring for your body, who you are as a person. And there is nothing evil about that. That is pure love pure goodness and it makes me cry because it is such a gift to be able to care for our own souls and then be able to pass that care on to others. I love the way that you have just described that with the word care because a self-compassion and, and all of this is, is such a big, a big part of this process as we experience more of who we are. But I love that description, caring for our spirit, caring for our soul and, and our physical body that is here, you know, having this human experience. What a gorgeous description. And I know I've invited you here and you've got one heck of a story. So I would love to start, though, um, asking you and I will hold this space for you in the way just please take your time and share what feels feels right and feels resonant to share but has spirituality always been part of your life <laughs> definitely not um, it is something it's not new anymore but once upon a time it was very new um, I grew up in a culture and society um, that believed that we were innately evil, um, that there was nothing good in us, um, that we could not and must not trust our own souls and our own understanding, um, that we must rely on people in positions of authority to tell us how to live, what to believe, um, what was true, what was false, what was right, what was wrong. Um, so from as far back as I can remember, <clears throat> there was a concerted effort to disconnect us from ourselves and make us reliant on something or somebody outside of ourselves um, to get through life. Um, when I was 16, um, I was sent to what was thought to be a good, happy place for Christian young people to go. Um, it was not, um, and it was actually a religious cult um, that was extremely abusive um, for everyone, but particularly for women. Um, 
I had already grown up in a world where as simply as human beings, we were worthless and, um, and evil and not to be trusted. And then I moved into this world where women in particular um, were evil, that we were the ones apparently who had brought sin into the world, um, that we were the cause of every terrible thing that has happened on earth since um, creation, um, which is what I believed back then. Um, and so I went from hating myself just for being human to hating myself for being a woman. And I spent the next 20 years um, believing that and, and being treated and treating myself as if I was nothing. Um, when I was 36, I came to a place in my life where I simply woke up one day and couldn't believe anymore. I couldn't believe any of those lies. I couldn't believe in the terrible God that I had been told was real and true. I could no I just couldn't believe it wasn't it wasn't anger, it wasn't um, resentment, it wasn't rebellion. It was the most quiet inner revolution I could have imagined. It just was gone. And I felt both incredible peace and absolute terror. <laughs> because when you take away everything that has formed who you are and um, and was the basis for all of your relationships with your family, your friends, your community, um, the hole that is left is very dark and cavernous and scary. Um, but in that darkness, I held on so tightly to a hope that there was something better. Um, and I don't know where that hope came from, and I don't know how it stayed. Um, but through abuse, molestation, brainwashing, um, starvation, beatings, everything, um, that hope stayed. And I am so deeply grateful. So grateful to myself for not giving up when everything around me suggested that I should. Grateful to, I call them my lights, um, people who shone for me and gave me hope that there was more. And I'm grateful to whatever it is in the universe that keeps us going through hell, that shines light into darkness, that brings hope into hopelessness. And so no, I did not grow up with spirituality, but I found it, or it found me. <laughs> I don't know what the real is, but, um, for the past eight years, um, I should back up just a little bit. So when I was 36, um, I decided that staying in the culture that I had grown up in was not safe for me. It wasn't, it wasn't a place that allowed me the freedom to heal, um, to study, to consider other options. Um, I wanted so badly to maintain those relationships and to um, and to rebuild on a foundation of love and kindness, um, but I realized that wasn't possible at that time. Um, instead, I was told that I was going to hell, 
that I was a shame to God, um, to my family, to my church, to my community. And I knew that as terrifying as it was to start over somewhere new, it was far more terrifying to stay in that place. So um, somehow, again, like I had found hope that I don't know where, I found courage from I don't know where. And I sold 90% of my belongings. I packed up everything into two suitcases and I moved to Australia and to start a new life. And I look back now and I think, holy Moses, <laughs> where did I find the strength to do that? But I am so grateful. Um, I moved to a farm in Southern Queensland with my lovely man, Robbie, whom I call Bear. And I came to this place that is safe and beautiful. Um, I'm surrounded by trees and fields and the massive open Australian sky and incredible sunshine and promptly had a complete and total breakdown of physical, spiritual, um, everything because I was finally safe and I wasn't alone and I didn't have to keep myself strong anymore. And that started my spiritual journey. Oh, I, I don't think I have anything to add. I feel like what you said was, was so perfect. And I just want to honor you for your willingness to share something so vulnerable and obviously um, incredibly challenging that I personally I mean I can can feel it on one level but I totally can't imagine it at another level so I'm so grateful for you being here um so I'd love to know now though how has spirituality unfolded since that time have there still been highs and I'm guessing there's still highs and lows in the time since you arrived in Australia and began to feel safe Oh, definitely. Um, um, I think it started with somebody telling me that I mattered. And that was quite revolutionary to me. And I could hear those words, but they didn't sink in. Um, I didn't even know what that meant. Um, and I would hear things like, love yourself. Um, care for yourself, um, listen to yourself, trust your gut. And that was so foreign to me because I had spent the previous 36 years of my life telling myself I couldn't be trusted and that I wasn't worthy of love, um, that I was worthy of hell and damnation. And so you cannot undo a lifetime of belief and thought overnight. Um, and I actually remember talking to you one time and you had mentioned that my journey was going to be long and meandering. And I thought, thank you. <laughs> it was such a gift to me because I am the kind of person that's like, okay, I see this and it needs to be fixed. So let's come up with four steps and do it. And I should be able to check that off healed from a lifetime of trauma in about a week. <laughs> and it just doesn't work that way. And so people like you who were lights for me and came along and gave me permission to go slow and to stop putting so much pressure on myself I think when you come out of a, a past like I have, um, you want to make up for lost time. You, it feels like most of your life was stolen from you and, um, and that you missed out on so many experiences. Um, and you go through a lot of, well, maybe not everybody, I went through a lot of grieving, um, just intense grieving. Um, I would sit on our back veranda for hours at a time and just weep. Um, 
and then I went through an anger phase, which was quite dreadful for me <laughs> because I'd spent my whole life suppressing anger because that was an evil feeling. And then it had to come out and I started swearing like a sailor and which ended up being so good. And that's another thing I'm grateful for Australia about is that everyone swears here and it is the most freeing <laughs> and wonderful thing because it calls things what they are. It's not that was unpleasant. I didn't enjoy that. No, that was blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and you could just express it. It gave power. It gave energy. It validated what I had gone through. And then I think I came to the most important place of all, which was forgiving myself. Um, because although so much of what happened to me was done to me by other people, I still made choices. Um, I didn't have the understanding or the knowledge or the wisdom to make different ones, but they were still choices that I made. Um, they were choices to stay in terrible situations. There were choices to not ask for help. Um, there were choices to trust bad people. Um, and I don't think evil of myself for doing that because I know it was pure survival. I know it was coping mechanisms, but I still, in order to build a relationship with trust with myself, I had to forgive myself and make a pledge to myself that I would never do that again. That if abusive people came, I would fight back. If bullies came, I would stand up to them. If people tried to crush me and make me feel small and insignificant, I would call them on their lives and I would not believe it. So when you start to believe new things, I think that the universe goes, okay, baby, let's test this <laughs> and see if you actually believe this. Um, so last year, a man started stalking me and um, showing up at my house and um, I was in absolute terror and fear and I didn't want to leave the house or the property. Anytime a car drove past, I would just shake and, um, and I thought, okay, okay, this is my chance to be the brave <laughs> that I've been learning and to be the courage and to be the stand up um, and not let the bad guys win person. And so I did. And the lovely thing is, you don't have to do that stuff by yourself. Um, you don't have to be brave all by yourself. And so I contacted the police. I had my husband with me. Um, I another policeman friend of mine called me and talked me through how to defend myself. Um, under Australian law, just things like that. And I was able to report him and to stand up to him. And, um, and I'd never done that before. And that was amazing and so wonderful. And um, <laughs> so that's, that's something um, that as I internalize these truths that I matter, I'm worth defending, I'm worth protecting, I'm worth standing up for, um, tests came along to see if I was actually going to stick with that. And I don't like tests. And I'd rather have it just philosophical that, yes, I am brave, thank you. <laughs> I don't like to have it tested. <laughs> and um, But I have had it tested. And now on the other side, I can honestly say when I look in the mirror, I am brave. I am strong. And I am not going to let bullies stand up because, and I can give these lists of examples of terrible bosses or um, awful clients or a stalker, um, whatever it is. And I know that going forward, I have the strength. I have the examples behind me that I am not a victim anymore. And part of my spiritual journey has been internalizing truth that I have hoped were true. And now I know are true. Ooh. <laughs> I can, you, 
hearing all of that, I mean, you must be like the bravest, strongest person that I know. Like this is huge. <laughs> And this little gorgeous woman is like, yes, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. That's, and I'm, oh, I just want to like give you a big hug and say, I'm so proud of you. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, so what I would love to know though, now that you have found this beautiful um, sense of spirituality and this caring for self and spirit and soul, which I just love that description so much. Can I ask you to share what it looks like for you? Like how do you weave things into your life to feel like you're aligning to that, that version of that, your meaning of spirituality? Ah, uh, well, for me, it starts every morning um, because that sets the whole tone for my day. And um, so I love, I love getting up early. That's my thing. I'm a country girl and I like to get up and I like to watch the sunrise. And um, so for me, I like to get up first thing in the morning and I write three pages at least of brain dump, <laughs> whatever is in my head, whatever my thoughts are, feelings, and it is pure waffle some of the time, um, and it's just dumping out whatever is in there, and it's, um, I feel terrible, my head hurts, but I'm exhausted, and I don't want to do anything, and then, but I had such a great time yesterday, and I loved meeting this new client, and oh, and I really want to make pear preserves today with cinnamon, and I just go, whatever is random <laughs> in my head, and get it all out on to the page and that just quiets my brain beautifully and instead of having all this noise all the noise is now on paper mm. and I can just let it go um, another thing I do every morning is oracle cards and um, this is a funny thing for me because um, I thought oracle cards and tarot cards were the same thing. And um, I had been raised that tarot cards were evil and demonic and all that sort of thing. And um, so I thought, what are oracle cards? What do they mean? And what are they for? And so I just went into a shop and asked them, <laughs> and said, what are these? And for me, oracle cards are just reminders of truth that they are just lovely little gentle nudges reminding me of what is true about myself, about the world. And um, it is very easy for me to forget what is true. And especially when life is busy and demands of work and family and life. Um, so to wake up every morning and to just say, okay, what do I need today? And shuffle my cards and then choose three. And I'm like, Oh, and every time, every time, it is just what I need. And um, reminders to trust my gut, to um, reminders to um, believe that I am safe and supported and loved. Um, reminders that it is good to take time um, away from the hustle and bustle of life and just go for a walk in the forest and, um, or just sit down and paint really bad pictures. Um, just for the sheer joy of it and so that's what I do I I get my brain <laughs> my brain dump writing down I um I have my oracle cards with gentle nudges of truth to keep me on track and then I connect with people who are lovely um we can't always choose who we encounter in life. So when I can choose, I choose really lovely ones. And I live way out in the boonies, so that means I'm far away from anyone, whether they are lovely or otherwise. <laughs> and so I connect in different ways. Um, so I read blog posts. I um, uh, schedule Skype meetings with people and with friends on the other side of the world. Um, I meet people for coffee and I learn from them and they learn from me and we support each other and cheer each other on and um, we talk about different ideas that we're learning and because I find that for my spiritual growth I need both aloneness and togetherness um, not not just one or the other um, because otherwise you get too self-absorbed and self-centered and 
all you can think about is your own issues. Um, and then when you're with other people, I don't know, it's lovely. It's wonderful to connect with kindred spirits. Oh, oh just uh, like, I just love everything that you're sharing so much. I don't, I don't feel like I need to add anything. I just that needing aloneness and togetherness and kindred spirits and Oracle cards being nudges of truth and brain dump, all of it. So good. So good. I hope I just, I just, I'm going to put it out there universe. There are people that will love what Krista has to say. Please put this in their hands. Um, as we kind of wind up though, I would really love to know you've had one heck of a journey in this one. Um, what advice would you have for somebody feeling curious about spirituality and ready to take a little step? Oh, um, well, I think often of what advice I would give myself if I was starting this journey again. And um, I think the first thing is, embrace mystery um, because I grew up in a world of absolute certainty of what was true um, when I left that world I was very afraid and I wanted to find another certainty to cling to so that I would feel safe um, and what I realized is that once again I was looking for safety outside of myself and the truth is I am always safe in myself, always. Um, I am quite a visual person, so I, I have pictures all the time of what I feel or what I want to feel and experience, and I always picture this very airy, dry cave with a white sand floor that is um, just so peaceful and absolutely secure and safe. And I picture my inner child in there and she's doing somersaults and building sand castles and just having a marvelous time. And um, so I think embracing mystery has been a wonderful thing to know that it's not terrifying that you don't have to know everything right away you can just have one little nugget of truth um, just hang on to a hope that there's more that life doesn't have to stay the way that it is um, and then I would say read everything <laughs> um, I I read everything on every subject imaginable imaginable and um, and some and I just would read and trust my gut and think, okay, that sounds a bit hokey for me, so I'll just let that go for now. But that sounds wonderful, I love this, and just jot that down. And so I started making a little collection of truths that I loved, and, and that was enough. It started out just, I believe that I matter. Mm -hmm. That was my one little nugget. Then um, I would add things to it, kind of like building a house. And um, so embrace mystery. Study everything you can. Look at it as a grand adventure and just hang on to whatever resonates with you. Mm -hmm. And know that you have an entire lifetime to discover and adventure and experiment and try things. And then number three, ask for help. Um, when you see people that are living out or embodying something that you treasure and that you value. Um, I spent my first couple of years here, people thought I didn't talk <laughs> because I was just watching and listening. And Australia has really feisty, amazing women. And um, I was just in awe of them, um, just so easily able to um, give their opinions and um, make choices and decisions. And so then I would start, I would ask them for coffee and, um, and say, I know this sounds really silly, but how do you do that? How do you, how do you just know where you want to go for dinner? How do you know what kind of clothing you want to wear? Um, my husband teased me that it, I was in my forties and going, it was like I was in high school figuring out what music, what clothing I liked, because those choices had been made for me for so long. Um, yeah, so ask for help. Um, Joe is wonderful. Um, people like Joe who care about your soul and your spirit and your growth and your healing. Um, there are 
the lovely people. Um, one of my favorite women is um, Bernie Giggins. Um, she's an inner child healer, and she has done so much to help me um, build those connections that were broken um, through the bad things that I went through. Um, so embrace mystery, study as much as you can, um, ask for help, and make it fun. Um, that has been a huge thing for me is to add play into my life. And um, I do that through art. Um, I do wood burning. I do really bad painting. I um, draw pictures. <laughs> they look like they've come from a third grader. Um, and they're just fun um, to do things like that. And um, I forgot to mention this earlier, but um, herbs have been a huge part of my spiritual journey and my healing process and um, I grow them and I harvest them and I make remedies for myself and my clients and um, my family and friends and I have just loved learning to understand um, how to heal and support ourselves through the things that grow around us and um, so look for the things that resonate with your spirit um, get as many healing things in as you can, whether it's massage or Reiki or kinesiology, try them all, just have fun. Don't be afraid of them, try them. And whether it works for you or not, you've tried it and it's, you will find the things that work best for you. Hmm. So much goodness, so much goodness. I love it. And fun, I, I think fun is such a great, tip like, like this really can be fun it doesn't mean there won't be ups and downs along the way but let's try and have a bit of fun and en enjoy <laughs> enjoy it and, and experimenting there's so much good advice there thank you so much for joining me i have loved everything you've shared it's really 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 good stuff there thank you um can you please tell everybody that's watching that would like to know a little bit about more about what it is that you do and your herbs and amazing workshops I know that you do and books and things, how would they go about finding you? Okay. Um, well, you can find me anytime on my website. It's ramblingtart.com um, and on Facebook, Instagram, any of those, I'm there and send me an email. Um, I love making things. So I, I love, we make our own wine, we make our own bread, um, ham, cheese, um, all the fun things, bread. Um, we live on 40 acres, and so this is my playground where I make things. Um, I make her herbal remedies. I have herbs drying everywhere. My kitchen is just one bookshelf after another of jars full of weird things. <laughs> and, um, so that's what I do. I make things and then I teach other people to make things. So I help people build their own apothecary. Um, I do that through individual workshops. Um, we can meet online and make them together or we meet in person um, or we just chat over email and uh, share recipes and ideas. Um, and I also have written a book called Herb and Spice. Uh, and it's a little book of medieval remedies because I I'm also a medieval reenactor, and so I love everything medieval, and um, yeah, so I've loved studying back through history, um, all of, about how healing has been done um, for centuries before the advent of modern medicine, which I also love because surgeons and doctors are amazing and um, help us with so many things, but we can also, also trust ourselves and restore and heal and support ourselves. Oh. And I look at your, you've got to check out Krista's Instagram feed. It is so beautiful. There's all these bright colors and amazing. And it makes me so curious. I want to come along. I want you to teach me all the herby things. It sounds so fun. I feel like I'm so, uh, I'm just really not the, gardening hasn't been a part of my life. <laughs> I've, I learned to speak plant one day, but at the moment, <laughs> I can talk to the trees, but I can't grow things myself very well yet. Yet. Yes. Yes. Oh, dear. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I loved that. And I look forward to talking to you again soon, my lovely lady. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye bye.